David Carr and John Hernandez, and uh, you guys do this really neat looking comic called Tainted Love. And um, the, the premise sounds really, really interesting. Uh, the way your uh, C5 uh, guy over here was describing it is, you have to do everything in your normal life except your vampires. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's one play, way of looking at it. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's like let's say it's set in like our world. You yeah, know, it's yeah. not a world that believes in vampires or anything like that. Okay. So it's just a couple that was in the wrong place at the wrong time. This has happened to them, and now they have to live with what's happened. And so it's not people who, uh, you know, necessarily were made for that kind of life. I mean, there's people like you and I. Yeah. You know, whatever your morality is. Yeah. Now you're stuck with this. You know. Yeah. So so there's there's been a lot of different types of vampires over time. You know, let's say. You've got your classic vampires back in the 1600s. Then you've got Interview of a Vampire, your tragic vampire. Then you've got, you know, right. uh, now your your sparkly vampires. Uh, what kind of vampires are these? Uh, are they are they kind of well, depressed that they're vampires? Are they happy or indifferent? Yeah. So unfortunately, they don't sparkle. So okay. <laughs> uh, if I'm letting anybody down by that. They, we have no sparkling, unfortunately. But uh, yeah. So basically, with our guys, it's. Where the comic book takes place is, let's say, six months after they attack, after the okay. first moments. Yeah. So we've kind of already gone through some of the stages of denial, you know, yeah. the grief, the anguish of knowing what you are, maybe the, you know, rejecting what that is, right. you know, and eventually maybe reaching some point of, I don't want to exactly say acceptance, but if after six months you haven't, you still exist, so you haven't yeah. died, you haven't yeah. found a way to kill yourself <laughs> or whatever that is, yeah. and you had to eat or do whatever, you must have worked out some kind of thing, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but let's say whatever that yeah. part is, yeah. you've worked that out. And I think the slight difference between what ours is like than maybe others is, this is a pair of vampires. So it's a couple that right. has lived together. They were a couple before. Right. So it's not like they found each other along the way now that they've been vampires. Right. No, they were two people that lived together, married or dating or what have yeah. you, that this happened to both of them and now they live with it together. Yeah. So. Not you know it's not like one trying to lead the other and trying right. to save them. It's yeah, yeah. a couple dealing with normal couple stuff. Yeah. Like what do you deal with as a couple? Well, this kind of stuff. You know. Yeah. Well, hopefully not this kind of stuff. But <laughs> well, it's you know. Yeah. But on top of that, then yeah. there's serial killer stuff that you've had to figure out. So it's hard right. enough to get along with someone that you're dating, but then when you have to add, we have to kill a lot of people on the way. In, in order to stay alive. Things. I mean, sure. uh, so. So what kind of vampire rules are there? Can, you know, can they go out in daylight? Uh, okay. Do they need to keep eating? So, and that's part of the fun of what they would have to explore because if you're in a world, look, ours, we don't believe in it, it's not real. Right. Okay, it's just fiction right. or whatever. Right. Um, and now I'm going to get visited by vampires tomorrow <laughs> and they'll be like, what did you say? I yeah. heard that interview. No, so like, yeah, so it's, let's say fiction. Yeah. So it's not like there was a manual now about okay. what this was. Yeah. You're talking about a fictional thing you read about yeah. that now happened to you and it kind of looks like the fictional thing you right. noticed. Right, right, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of the fun okay. of what they might figure out. And, sure. and not even beyond what are the rules of their vampirism, but yeah. what are the personal rules that they had to make to be what they are? Yeah. Like, how do you deal with what that is? Yeah. And what rules maybe did you come up with or not? And do both people in the relationship agree to those rules? I mean, you figure you sort of have to, but it's like, for example, like, well, what happens to their friends? Yeah. I mean, you still have family. Yeah. You still care about your family. You still have friends. It's not like any of that changed overnight. Right, right. So, but what happens if you're... You know, husband has a friend you really don't like. <laughs> <laughs> no. And what happens when you do that? If you cross that line, what's she going to do? Yeah, yeah. And can it really deal with it? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> no, that's really cool. And I have to say, you know, as a married guy, reading through the first couple pages of your first issue, like it, it read real. Like, I, I mean, I'm not a vampire, but the other aspect of it felt, you know, like, yes, a couple would actually do this. Like, it seemed, it seemed realistic, and, yeah. I, and I appreciate that. Uh, going to the art, I thought the art was really neat. Um, it's, it's almost painterly. It's it's got this neat aspect where it's it's realistic without getting into that uncanny valley type of thing. How did you come up with that art style for this book? Um, I guess it's a lot of influences. Before I I really loved animation. You know, I love the art of Jim Lee, and I kind of feel like I live in some zone in between there. I I do want it to be expressive. I do want it to be realistic, but it's it's a hyper realism. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think it works really well for the subject matter that you guys are tackling. We've now, definitely spent a lot of nights reading Blade of the Immortal, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. So. <laughs> There's been a few bingers, you know, and then you get lost in that world, and our influences bleed in in different yeah. ways, as you can imagine. So yeah. as a creative team, um, how does it work on this book? Are you guys both uh, writing, or are you contributing some, some aspect, or is it kind of you write a script and then you draw to the script? So I originally wrote screenplays. That's kind of where okay. I got my start. I produced films, and I came from that world. And I originally wrote screenplay treatments before him and I decided to tackle, like, well, where in this story would it 
a comic book kind of take yeah. place. So I bring the story to it, but honestly, with the way our creativeness works, I mean, he's the entire art department in that sense yeah. capacity. And really, when, when you come at it from that vein, I want to say as soon as, in the same way a filmmaker, they write a script or they might have an idea of it, but then when you go to make it as a film, it's like you get to write it all over again. Right. And then the actors bring what they bring to the table. And if it's a different director, he brings something. The right. cinematographer brings something. Right. And it always becomes something else. It kind of right. comes to life. Right. And I want to say, like, in that weird pairing way, like, John has been that perfect pairing for me, at least definitely in this story where he has helped create those characters made him come to life for me, and sometimes they take on a life of their own. So we both kind of make the story in that way. It can't not be that kind of weird shared thing, but it's so blurry where those lines are. It's like, we kind of just kind of create it together. It's right. that kind of interesting dynamic, yeah. Like he usually, he gives me film scripts and I sit okay. there and I see the movie in my head. I jot a lot of notes down. Nice. I, show him, I show him sketches and then like we kind of pick and choose what it was and the pages evolve out of that. Yeah. And then we argue and fight yeah. and then we yeah. make up and hug. And, <laughs> And then somehow out of that comes the characters, yeah. and then and then those characters then tell us how it's going to go, and then we're both like, well, I guess. Ugh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how Stanley did it. Lots of you know, lots of hugs and apologetic. <laughs> I, t I tell the story, then he starts to draw it, and then they're looking at other characters on the page, looking at us like, what the heck did you just make? And we're like, okay, fine. Then you got to get out your eraser and yeah. start over again, man. And does uh, so? I, I only looked through the first issue. I, you guys have the first three here. Um, does the color palette remain the same throughout? Is it kind of that, or does it change? Uh... I'll almost say every issue looks its own thing. Oh, it, interesting. It grows okay. yeah, yeah. exponentially. So because of full-time jobs and everything yeah, we yeah. had coming up to this point, basically make about an issue a year, right. honestly. Oh, you know, like okay. That's kind of what it is. Yeah. And he spends so much time digitally painting and doing so yeah. much other kind of art that his art grows so much that we almost have to pull it back and be like, we can't have the book change too much so it doesn't read right. But yeah, yeah. honestly, if you look at each issue, I think you're going to notice like it grows quite a bit. Yeah. And so that's kind of an interesting dynamic to find the way that still makes those issues work. Pretty much every issue I've yeah. tried to do something new or I like develop the style a little more. Um, I mean, I, I, I approach color the same way, but how the color gets on there okay. is yeah, done yeah. different. Yeah. And the different so what we're doing right now is we're we're just now even next week we're opening up a comic book toy collectible shop. It's also going to sort of be a home base for C5 Studio which is us the publisher and we're publishing other books. I have another new book coming out called The Beast Within. Okay. Um which is like a werewolf dynamic yeah, yeah. but still sort of let's say set more of like a you know like yeah. a real world feeling not like yeah. the mystical one. Um, and we're going to be together publishing other books, other books together. He has new pop projects like Drift and other projects to okay. kind of peek at here at the show. And um, and we have even others we haven't talked about. And we're even picking up other like artists and writers and nice. creating a full-fledged yeah. dynamic so that we can produce way more books a year. And yeah. so it's not like one book a year from right. one group of people. Right. It's going to be a lot more product coming. But this was kind of like our culmination to at least get the one, two, and three is kind of like a really nice story put together. Right. That at least shows people, look, here's what this story was about, here's what C5 Studio has to offer, here's the quality we make, and here's what we want to do going forward. Yeah. So so one other question. So you said you came from the Hollywood type of type of world doing screenplays and stuff. Right. Um, what do you what do you see as a strength of the comic? What what can you do with a comic that you can't do with a live action or an animation? So the beauty of the comic book is the and he's gonna probably speak to that a little bit more, but we started off together. He was doing storyboards on the films. So, like, the storyboards are single panels that move right. as, like, you know, like a, almost like a flip book, right. as, as close as you could get this thing to be animation. Sure. The page is such a different dynamic. He would have to probably explain that better because it's more like a piece of art. It's yeah, a, yeah. It's a different kind of nature to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, you'd have to kind of. I mean, I, ironically, our first story is a story of two normal, everyday people. So, it's not something so fantastic. It was meant to be filmed. Um, so, we're never quite doing anything out there that like you couldn't be filled. But I always think that's the strength of doing comics that you have this unlimited budget that fits in you know a, an eight by ten space or whatever, yeah. and you could do anything in there. Um, that being said, we do have a lot of pages of people, two people in a room talking to each other. Yeah. But we try, but we you you can do very experimental things with camera angles and lighting, and we can. Ex experiment and play in that world without having to do complicated setups. Yeah. Um, and, and I do think we, like, compared to other books that I've seen, and I'm, I'm sure there's some out there, but we really do approach it like cinematographers. We, we, we place cameras, we light the shots, we care about the color and what it's, 
says to things how, like, yeah. how much shadow there is and what the light is doing. And that, that eye for film, I think, is what helps our book stand out. Well, it, it's, it's neat that you said it that way because I, I kind of felt that as I was reading it. I felt like this is not the way comics are usually paneled. This is not yeah. the way they usually... Right. Very unusual book. Well, yeah. but that being but said... No, and not in a bad have, way. He does have kind of an amazing yeah, sense yeah. of... I mean, when you look at the page, you still have to look at it as a whole page. It's, yeah. it's, it's like looking at five screens at once or yeah. six screens. We don't do that when we're watching a film. Sure. So your eye has to be drawn through the page. It has to yeah. kind of tell a story in that way. And he has kind of an amazing sense of like how pages should go together, like how it's looked at as a piece of art. Right. Not, and also, how do you make somebody move through the story at the right beat and pattern? Because there's so much that can happen in between a panel. Yeah. Sometimes it's only a second. Sometimes it's an hour. Sometimes yeah. it could be days. And yeah. it's really hard to pull somebody through and make you have also an emotional experience on a yeah. page, you know? And that almost becomes trickier than to just like when I was doing it in film, I could really kind of hone you in and I could use yeah. our dialogue and use music and use yeah. all these things to sway you into a moment. Yeah. On this, you have to be able to do it visually on the whole page and then lull me in. I feel it's a lot trickier to be honest and yeah. he kind of brings a certain magic to that. So that is a different craft than just yeah. more, like other guys that have worked with doing storyboards. It is different in that sense because it is also like something you're you know, it also, also the trick of the page turn. Right. You know, like, I didn't even realize this, but it's like when you go to commercial break, right, I right. know commercial break, right? Yeah, yeah. But page turn, it's like, you have to have it where, do I want to turn that next page? Right. How excited am I? Does it lead me into the next moment? Right. Am I surprised? Yeah. Am I hurt? Am I, does it flow? Right. Does it feel like a stutter step? Do I feel like I'm watching commercials? <laughs> you know? And he has kind of amazing sense of making it not feel like all the bad things and kind of bringing all the magic out of it. So uh, that's, uh, you know, again, Comic books is such an interesting craft. Yeah. I never would have thought it was this complicated until I started doing it. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, this is super complicated and different. Yeah. But kind of a joy at the end to, it's a, it's a fun treat to be able to see it magically come to life like that. Yeah, what's interesting is, you know, you're, you're giving up a lot more when you produce a comic because the reader is the one who determines the pace at which they're reading, flipping. How much are they focusing on a panel, right? So, And on that's a, the trick. The reader thinks they are. Yeah, oh. But... It's like a moment, like, yeah, like yeah. him and I, like, usually, like, I'll do a page yeah. and I'm like, I think this should be silent. He might add, like, a little emotion or a little note or something, yeah, yeah. and he's like, but now you have to read it. Yeah. And and if you go to this, it, it means that you have to go at least a couple seconds to here and then there. It's yeah. like the magic of those guys who do commercials. Yeah. They know exactly how much attention span you have, what you're going to take in, what you're not. They have honed that craft. Yeah. It is a true craft and talent that I feel yeah. you have to have somebody who really understands comics that does yeah. it. And... I mean, John has spent a lot of years, I mean, he was a graphic designer and he did a lot of storyboards and stuff, but he did spend a lot of years in college, like specifically learning comics, learning the storyboards, learning crafts like that. And I feel like that definitely is different than when I've worked with other guys in, on comics and things and seen that stuff. It's definitely been very different uh, that way. I think if you look at it. So there is so much more to yeah. it. Like I said, that yeah. I didn't realize until yeah. I thought, oh, you just take our panels. Hey, we got all these panels we drew. Can we just slap them together in a comic book? Yeah, yeah. And let's make this story happen. Yeah. Not so I mean, much. You, you can do that. There's a lot of books <laughs> sure. that do. Yeah. But I think that's what makes ours cool. Like there's a very, there, there is a sense of pacing. Yeah. There's a sense of editing. Um, and I, like when I see that in other books, I'm like, wow. I really, I feel yeah. that that makes it more immersive than any level of drawing or yeah. you know computer color graphic shading. Any yeah. all those techniques doesn't matter. That's how you tell the story. Yeah. And I think all, that's where we go. Although what's what's interesting about that is, let's say you guys end up on Comixology, right? Okay, sure. And, and they've got they've got the panel by panel navigation. So now, like, what are you designing for you? Are you designing for your reader? that's buying the whole book and seeing a page at once or you design you know what I'm saying and I like, don't know if this and that's is weird. interesting yeah you know? so we had to think about that and we actually did the origin story like a prequel story that is an online comic yeah. and they're literally panels like mm -hmm. as a storyboard in film and the panels move it was uh. so much work so we, had to, <laughs> we literally made like little mini animations it's madness you can yeah. go check it out it's literally we just leave it up there it's free it's on nice. taintedlovecomics.com and you can go check it out I'm actually um, really super proud of that one <laughs> that, I, that I'd made We'll put up the ad for it. It's on taintedlovecomics.com. You can beat that out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And go see it for free. You guys can go go look at free comic books for free and you can go you can go check it out and stuff. But like and you're I'm, saying with yeah. digital comics though, like you know, when I I don't read a lot of web comics, to be to yeah. be fair. I love yeah. the art of a printed book. I like flipping through it and like you said, controlling it at your own yeah. pace, going in and out. Yeah. Um that's that's an experience you only get reading a book. And I felt like just throwing up pages yeah. on a website, yeah. like you're just buying time till that gets into a book. <laughs> it's it's being not being read the right way. Right, right. So I wanted a webcomic that I felt like 
this is digital. This is right. meant for a digital world to be digested digitally. And I want to do things that we, can, we couldn't do before. So like the words, when they speak, the words come out of their yeah. mouth, drift off the page. Wow. Um, it's all done with animated yeah, GIFs. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, action can happen. Always bigger than we think it's going to be. We're always, we're always cashing, writing checks we can't cash. It's biting out more than we can we do. Spent more than well, a year doing yes. that. It's 13 <laughs> episodes online. Like, we thought we could do but, it at a weekly pace, but if we were going to do it, the thing about us is like, we didn't just want to slap something up there. It's like we wanted to have a true reverence for it. It's like, look, the online comic is a very different medium than a comic yeah, book. Yeah. It's the same thing with taking storyboards and making a comic book. And I kind of like that we. We didn't just slap storyboards down. It's like, no, this is a comic book. In order to respect it, you want to treat that medium with the real reverence it is, and it really is a craft. And I feel like if we had just thrown it down, it just there would have yeah. been a disservice we would have done to it, and it just wasn't the way you could have really told the story. And so we we wanted to bring something to it like that. And 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 honestly, like, and even though we don't really do a lot of online comics, particularly like my other artist now, Jake, who's doing um, um, the Beast Within, he has an online comic that he does called Battlements, um, and that's something you guys can go check that out too. And like, so we're kind of working with more and more guys that do come from that area or are really good at that, or they they make board games or they right. do role playing games. They do so many other things. And again, each one of those things is a very different craft. Right, right. I mean, it was a different enough craft when I learned screenplay writing. Yeah. It was like, oh, I want to go write a TV show. And it's like, yeah. that's not the same screenwriting yeah. as a movie. And I'm like, why yeah. not? It's the same program. <laughs> yeah. No, not the same thing. And you have to, again, there's a level of reverence and a, 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 beat, and, a beat and a cadence to the right. way story is told. Right. And when it comes to comics, the writer has to kind of take a back seat to the fact that right. the artist is sort of driving the story sort of, and the beat and cadence has so much to do with a co-writing of yeah. sorts. It's just so different than what I expected, but it's kind of it was kind of a wonderful uh, experience to be able to collaborate that way and to let go of some of your own ego to make yeah. room for something else to let it really grow and to mature the characters yeah. and mature the story. And it was um, again, it's hard to do it first because it's so easy for us as writers. We've been writing in our little room, just yeah. writing novels or just <laughs> writing screenplays. We've never had to share this with right. anybody. This is right. so personal. It's so dramatically right. personal. But then again, it's also personal for the artist. Yeah. Their drawings are very personal. The emotions they bring to it. So it's like. And I, I, and I feel like a lot of other groups that have done it, it's like a lot of times in the industry, like the artist is just the puppet. Like I'm the writer and you do exactly what I want. Or the actor's hired, right? right? And it's right. like, you're just my hand puppet and you move, <laughs> I move my hand, I put my hand up and then you yeah, move your yeah, mouth yeah, and yeah. you do what is, it's, but that's not really true. And if we yeah. treat it like that, the product can only be so good. Right, that you know, makes so sense. I feel like, yeah, yeah. so we try to come at it from that kind of perspective of like, it's a true collaborative effort. We believe that at C5 Studio. We bring on other artists and writers. We try to like teach that kind of practice yeah. if it's even teachable, but it's kind of that idea of like, we believe that everybody's voice that is a creator on those books is meaningful. And if you drown out one of the voices and you're just like, no, I'm the director, you do what I say. Yeah. Well, of course the cinematography isn't gonna be as good because maybe he's not a great cinematographer. Right. Of course the script is gonna suffer and other things are gonna suffer. Because he maybe he's really good at his one job, yeah. but he's not really recognizing the other true talent that's there right. because he's only looking at his own little island, you know? And, yeah. and those are the, just some of the lessons I've learned sure. along the way yeah, yeah. of deciding to make comic books. <laughs> Those are some of the hard lessons. If you get those out of the way first, yeah. you'll you'll save yourself all the years in, I wasted. Yeah. In the end, you get a better book. Being stubborn. Like, I mean, yeah. for all the... Absolutely. Con like, I love doing a collaboration. I love working it. It always feels... Every one of these issues feels like we're making a film yeah. together. And But when whenever we have, you know, disagreements or, like, how, how to approach the scene and we have different ways of looking at it. Like we always feel like it comes out to, we choose what's best for the story. So what you're getting on that page when you go through issues one, two, and three, like this is the best version of the story that we can tell. Cool. Yeah, we've, so, learned, we've learned to compromise and it's basically like, well, even if I disagree with something or he does, we kind of try to reach a place of like, let's try it. Okay. And neither one of us would say, okay, well, we're not gonna say this is how it's gonna go, but let's try it. Yeah. And I gotta tell you, there's been way too many times when I was like, decided I was really wrong, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I was like, this really did change my way of looking yeah. at it. But it's hard because, again, when you create characters, they're kind of yours, and so yeah. it's really hard to share. Sure. But, you know, but part of that was a growing process, too. We've been together on the book for so long that he knows the characters as well as I do, and we yeah. brought so much together that they really are ours now together. Yeah. And, um, you know, but it's it's been a really neat collaborative process, and it's definitely helped me grow as a writer that I feel like just as a normal writer writing in the industry or just being a screenwriter and just send it off to the people and be like, here you go, make the movie. Yeah. Um, I never would have been able to grow that way. It's just right. I would have been in an island, and I never would have been able to do that. So, it was worth it to do this kind of, you know, yeah. life journey path. Even though yeah. some people might say straying away from where I was going. <laughs> to me, like I'm trying to build it all together as one. Like I said, we're opening the comic book store in Northern Virginia. Right. Um, 
uh, Tashi Station and everything. And it's like, I'm tr we're trying to bring all those houses together under one roof and say, look, I still have my film companies. I'm still making those things. You know, like, what if we did them all together? What if yeah. they all grew together as one thing? You know, who knows? Maybe something right. really awesome could come out of it. And so we're kind of trying to head in those directions. Well, that's really neat. So kind of uh, closing things up here. Uh, so, so you said at this point you're doing them one a year for, for this particular series uh, for Tainted Love. They, or they've been coming out once a year. You're just Not having to find us in this moment where yeah, yeah. issue three is probably the last one John's going to be drawing. Okay. Um, he might still do the story, you know, like he might do layouts and might, right. you know, whatever. We, right, right. we still work the book out together and stuff like that. But he's moving on to other projects. I mean, he has a project Drift uh -huh. that maybe soon we'll start to really, you know, uh -huh. see some more things about. He's got some images up and some things right. you can check out here at the booth. Um, but there's a lot of other stories. There's stories he's he's had in the works for a long time sure. um, that we would love to see happen. And yeah. he can if he's working a full time job. No, and no. just we're doing this book. And it's like I love him on this book, but yeah. I want to see all these other books too. And I'm sure. like, hey, when am I going to see that? And it's like, well, I can if I'm just doing this. <laughs> and so we're trying to transition where it's like, well, what if instead of us working for all the different people we're working for, what if we worked for a comic book store slash sort of our business yeah, yeah. and just grow the business? Then we have more time to draw, more right. time to write, more time to meet the fans more time to really grow it as a publisher and that's yeah. what we're trying to do so it's very possible we'll get another artist to come on to do tainted love and it might be a lot more issues a year i kind of think in this game we can probably do about three issues a year and that's kind of tapping out yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like because you're still doing another job it's like until we get enough funds to where it's like we yeah. can just have somebody yeah. just be an artist i can just pay him all day long to do it yeah we're using other mediums like, well, how about run my gaming area? How about run this? Or how about yeah. run this department? Or how about do run an online store? Yeah. We're, we're, we're kind of having to like find other ways to make money so that we don't stress the book out to force this to make that money. Yeah. I wanted to keep this very low print, but very high quality. Yeah. So issue one only has 500 print. Issue two has maybe 250 right. print. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and it's not because I couldn't sell thousands of them. It's because I want, we're just trying to build it up so that when we go to Diamond and Nationwide, right. we'll change out all the covers, make it so these are kind of special. Yeah. And you get something, you know, the biggest hit and the freshest right. thing. Yeah. So this is just kind of keeping it alive to be out here so you can see us. We are in the industry, but we don't want to overdo it yet. Yeah, yeah, you know, no. like, yeah. we want to bring and, you quality. And don't feel bad. You know, Brandon Graham is a, you know, writer, artist in the industry. And for multiple warheads, he's putting out one, uh, maybe yeah. one or two a year. So you're not exactly behind some of the professionals out there either. Okay. But uh, where do you see the, the comic going? Is it an ongoing? Do you have uh, an end in sight? Uh, so I could, and again, I mean, really a lot of it depends on like uh, who's on the book at the time and what our other projects are on the table. I could in theory write 75 issues okay. and not be tired so yeah. let's call it an ongoing yeah at the moment the first seven issues would be an arc okay uh, but the first three issues is a really good like it could be compiled as a reader and be a really good like real solid pilot episode or yeah. like a double episode in a row like yeah. hey we're gonna give you a two a, you know a two hour right something right, or right, whatever right, hour right, and a half right, opener right, right i feel like it's a solid that okay. to say hey that's what this book can be yeah but i have so many other stories to tell and so many other things <laughs> i want to do yeah that the answer is yes, and obviously a writer can be writing a lot more things, and yeah. artists have to really draw it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, yes, it could be ongoing, and I have yeah. plenty of story to tell. Nice. So for fans of Tainted Love, yes. For fans of Beast Within, once that finally starts happening, that is a very self-contained story that's going to be about six issues or whatever, you know, maybe seven max. Uh -huh. um, I'm not saying there could never be something else beyond that, but it was really meant to be a self-contained, very specific thing. How about the one you're working on, uh, Drift? Drift? Drift will probably start out as a graphic novel. Okay. Like an extended issue, of sort of like a pilot episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I just kind of want to feel it out and see what people, how people respond to it. Right. And then I'll decide how, like, um, it definitely has, it's a, it's a, it's a story of uh, uh, set in space. Okay. Um, in kind of like an alternate future universe where it's, um, but it's centered around, like, the galaxy's most dangerous race. Oh, nice. So okay. there's definitely an end. There's yeah, a yeah. finish line to it um, that's designed. So depending on the response to it, like, you know, do I want to tell this in a succinct way or right. do I want to, you know, drag it out? Or, like, I can always revisit it and right. see different phases and, and see the same race from maybe a different character's point of view. That'd be really neat. I, that, that's something that is not unheard of in comics, but it's definitely much more common in prose. I think, <coughs> excuse me, something like that would be really neat. I think something like, like Akira was, was, was stretched out in, I want to say, maybe about six novels. Yeah. They were kind of thick, but they were, you know, maybe, yeah. but it definitely had to be, 
beginning, middle, and end. Yeah. I want to say like in that same way, maybe Drift has that same life, but how much is in the middle is yeah. really about how much the characters speak yeah. to you. And there's definitely been times where we wrote some side character. They were like, this is not a throwaway, but you know, yeah, like, yeah. it's not meant to go on too yeah. much. He's meant yeah, to yeah. fill a task and they just speak to you so much and they you keep coming yeah. back to him they endear you yeah, yeah. and then you find yourself writing a whole series and yeah. now he's got a you know he's in the race someone or who something has one <laughs> line in someone yeah. else's story yeah. like has a whole rich adventure on his own that yeah. you've never seen before well that and that's what i like about the different povs is it it, it grounds your universe you know these are people that have other lives outside of the main characters lives you know so one one final thing, which is uh, you guys mentioned the prequel to Tainted Love is is on. Was it, did you call it a prequel? Yeah. The, the anime well, gifts. You know, story. So okay, so the comic book starts six <laughs> months after this had happened to them, right? So so we could get through some of the muck of it and yeah. just get right into like, shall we say more of the fun? I don't yeah, know, yeah. but, but yeah, it, yeah. more of a pace that a comic book works with better. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when we did the online comic, we didn't want to retread the same material, so I went back and started to tell like maybe how this could have happened. Okay. Um, but it would be more like the pacing of a film. Yeah. You know, and so you have the first 15 minutes or so where you can get to know the characters and stuff. If we did that, the first comic would have been them going to the grocery store and hanging out and, right. I don't know, going to work. Like, right. uh, nobody yeah. would read this comic book. Yeah. So it was kind of more like that. It gave us a, a way to tell a different kind of story. So would you, know? you recommend, in terms of spoilers or those type of things, someone... Save that till after they've read what's out already, we or at least the first sure issue. We made sure there was nothing that could spoil the first issue. Okay. Okay. Um, honestly, maybe even the stuff we've already even said in this interview, maybe could be as close to spoilerish, is more spoilerish than let's say what's okay. online. And even that, we didn't really say anything. Okay. Really. Yeah, yeah. So you know what I mean? Like, I would say the one thing that isn't necessarily clear is somebody who picks up issue one off the newsstand. Is both people a vampire? But I kind of am saying that like, if people ask me if they should come to the book. Partly what makes it different is it's two people that are right. with the same problem. So they're like what I feel like in yeah. my marriage, like the, the things that we go through, we go yeah. through together. It's not like, yeah. yes, there's problems that I just have or she just have, right. but we go through those problems together. And if I had separated it, it wouldn't have felt like, it wouldn't have been the things that I relate to and yeah. the story I wanted to explore. I wanted yeah. to be a real, like you go through the real hardships right. of what having a relationship is like. Right. And there's a lot of hardships all by itself. To throw in something as crazy as, by the way, <laughs> we have to eat people and kill people to live yeah. is madness. Yeah. But in some ways you could say it's the true complication right. of what some relationships can be about. There's sometimes yeah. there's things that happen in relationships that are pretty hard to deal with. Yeah. Um, I don't even want to judge and say what's harder than the other, but I'm saying that I feel like it still do, would resonate in that way. You okay, know? cool. And I wanted this story to be like that. So in that sense, the online comic doesn't spoil that either. Um, so you don't necessarily know. But, okay. But that's as close to a spoiler as you're going to get. And even yeah. so, I don't think it will ruin any of the enjoyment at all. There's so much to reveal and so much fun that takes place in that way and so much he brought to the art. I, yeah. I, I think, no, we're not. We didn't give anything away. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for talking yep. to me. Thanks for taking the time. It was really great, and uh, from what I saw of the comic, just the art, just the first few pages I read, is definitely something worth checking out. Sure, you want me to hold it up real quick? I mean, we can just show, you know, a couple of the covers, so just you can see the books. Yeah. This is what uh, the and books are going to look where like. Where can they Here's get it outside of conventions out? right now? Um, or only conventions right now? So you right now. can find us on the website. You can go to taintedlovecomics.com, and we do have a way for you to reach out to us to get it. We might put up something on, online to buy into it. Um, the, the biggest thing that we do would be this. So this is how we kind of promote all our comic books. No matter what comic book it is, we basically create a promotional poster. Now these are limited out of uh, 250, okay? And what it is, is they're $15, but every single person who buys one gets their name and print in the back of our comic book. We're gonna put them in all the back of the comic books. We're gonna put them in the back of the trade. When I go to Diamond, I'm gonna print them again. Those are our like 250 supporters. So like, and I'm never gonna have any more for that book. So no matter how much life this book gets, how many issues it goes on to, if it goes on to be a great success or whatever, I still will always have this 250 supporters that right. I will keep printing and being like, those are my people. <laughs> and so that was like our Kickstarter. I didn't yeah. want to do a real Kickstarter and yeah. have it be like, hey, I don't have any comic book or anything to show right. you, but give me money. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, you know what? You can read the comic book right now. Right. If you like it, right. you can support it. And right. so to me, this is like what we mostly do like when you reach out to us. Yeah. But if you want to get the comics, there may be a way to do it. And we're going to do way more shows. I'm going to have a store now, so you can right. come to the store and literally right. buy them. Right in the store, we're also at Flashback Comics Flashback in Woodbridge. Comics Flashback has been a huge supporter of us. And so if you reach out to them, they oftentimes okay. have comics. Um, but, yeah, I mean, again, they're very low print. So right. if you want it, you need to reach out soon. I might only have maybe 20 or 30 copies of the first couple issues left. Okay. And we are going to do a collected one, two, and three. And I'm working toward, like, yeah. having it out there. But I didn't want to ruin the... 
the beauty of like you're getting something limited or exclusive right, or right. look if this right. the gets, first if it, if it gets where it's gonna go yeah. I want I want to hear that people are like hey man we sold your book online for four hundred dollars yeah. that's great yeah. I'm happy to hear that I'm like yeah. I'm not gonna be like you did what yeah give me my cut no it's I I want I want people to look they invested in us yeah. I want to give them something special I'm a fan first yeah. I buy other people's books I'm into this stuff you know and so it's like I I want to give them something special that I at least thought was special. I can't promise it's going to be worth any money, <laughs> but uh, but I hope so, and, yeah. and and or I hope they just like at least treasure it and cherish it. And it's like, and you have something neat and exclusive from us yeah. that made it worth meeting us, made it worth going out of their way to find right. us. Right. Awesome.